Now we consider the second example of continuous time random processes. We have visited the Gaussian random process, and it's time to look at the Poisson or Poisson process. It's the name of, French, of a French scientist, so we call it a Poisson random process. And in this process, usually it's very common and widely used in networking. Uh, we consider a situation in which events occur at random uh, across time. And the average rate of arrivals, the average rate of occurrence of this is uh, going to be lambda. So n is now representing the number of events, how many times this happens. So the x-axis here is time. And we want to see how many times the, the, this, this specific uh, phenomenon occurs. So we have the time axis is shown here. These are the instances where the occurrence happen, or the arrivals of customers, if you like, in the example of customers. Now, n of t represent the number of customers, number of events occurring in the interval from 0 to t. So here, the first arrival, we, we have 1. Second arrival becomes 2, then 3, and 4, then we have 5. So n is the number of occurrence in a given time interval. N of t is a non-decreasing. It cannot decrease because it's accumulation of number of customers. Uh, it's integer values, and it's a continuous time random process. This process is referred to as Poisson process. What you see in the figure here on the right is an example, a sample path, or a realization, a sample path or realization of the Poisson process. The event occurrence time is S1, S2, as we mentioned. And finally, the inter-arrival time is denoted by x. So every inter-arrival time, we refer to it as a random variable or another random process, which is x. So this is, a rand this is called the Poisson random process, or if you want to, to uh, you can also say the Poisson random process. Now, if you want to know how we got to this stage, how did they derive the Poisson process and how does it look formally in math? We need to start from the binomial distribution. So we're given around, we're giving a certain time instant. Remember that we had in binomial, we had discrete example. To make it continuous time, we can start by dividing the time into smaller time samples. So if we divide the interval into small n sub intervals, so n is the number of sub intervals. Now, the probability of occurrence in every sub-interval is p. And, of course, the average of number of occurrence will be n times p. n times p will tell, will tell you the expected number of occurrence, the average of this binomial distribution. Let's call the lambda to represent the arrival rate. How many arrivals per given time unit? So we can say that the average is n b. It's true. It's equal to n b. But also, if you know that lambda is the average, you can multiply by the time, and you get the average also. So we can say lambda t equal to n b. Here is the discrete notation, and here is the continuous notation. So we can relate them to each other. As we divide these into smaller parts, we get into um, get into the continuous time axis. Then n approaches. Uh, infinity, number of, of divisions, and the probability of occurrence in a specific one would be approaching zero. So n times p, infinity times zero. But we will keep the average the same, so np times np equals to lambda t. So with this approximation, we can go from the binomial distribution by substituting p equal to lambda t over n into this expression with some math simplification or uh, work out, we can find the final form, which is highlighted here for the, for the Poisson distribution. For this reason, n of t is called the Poisson distribution because a process because it follows the Poisson distribution. For more formal derivation, how we go from binomial to Poisson, I'm referring to the following um, link. I will be sharing my slides so you can access the link. Or you can search for it. So, so I'm just showing you the idea of the relation between binomial and Poisson. But if you want more rigid math derivation, you can follow the link. Here are some quick notes about Poisson random process. Uh, the Poisson random process is called also the counting process because it counts the number of occurrences. 
arrival of customers, failure of parts, lightning. These are examples now with the, the internet, number of Google search, number of hits, number. All of these are governed by the Poisson random process. Now, the basic, um, the basic assumptions when we derive the random process, when we go from binomial, we assume that events do not coincide. And also the number of occurrence in a given time interval is independent from each other. So we have independent increments. So if we know that occurrence happen at one time interval, we cannot tell about the second time interval. Those two assumptions are usually invoked to derive and, um, and use with the Poisson random process. Recall that the average rate of arrival of average rate of occurrence is lambda. And the form for the Poisson is given by the following equation. It has exponential minus lambda t. It has the power here of k and then k factorial. So this gives you the probability. If you want to go from probability to a random, to PDF or random process, then of course, since it's discrete um, counting process, we'll have the delta and we cover all possible number of occurrences. So to go from here to here, this is a similar expression. But then we have the delta and the summation to make it a valid uh, PDF. For the Poisson process, you can, you can find the expectation, but since it's widely used, you'll find that the expected value of x of t is lambda t. And also the variance would equal to the mean, and it's going to be lambda t. So this is a special case for the Poisson process. Lambda t is the variance and lambda t is the mean. You can, using the relation between the second moments, remember that the variance squared equal to x, expected value of x squared minus expected value of x squared. Uh, if you substitute here, you'll find that the expected value of x squared will be lambda t times 1 plus lambda t. The probability distribution of waiting time until the next occurrence. We, uh, the Poisson is the counting process. But if somebody is interested in the inter arrival time with the previous assumptions, you will get exponential distribution. So exponential is the inter arrival time. The number of occurrence is going to be Poisson process. The occurrence itself is uniform on any time interval. So it could have been here or there with a uniform distribution. The counting is Poisson. The inter arrival time is going to be exponential. The following on the side here is a realization of what I mentioned before. I'm going to remove this um, just to make it clear. So we, the x-axis is time and the y-axis, uh, these are the occurrences instances. They are uniformly distributed. The inter-arrival time is exponential. If you get the histogram of this, you get inter-arrival time to be exponential. And the counting itself, the number on the y-axis, is the Poisson process. You can refer to the Wikipedia to read more about the Poisson process. Now let's look at examples. I am recalling here the definition or the probability at least of the Poisson example. Uh, it says in this question, inquiries arrive at a recording machine. Inquiries arrive at a recording machine message device, recording message device, according to Poisson process. So we're giving the rate, this is lambda, lambda 15 inquiries per minute. So the unit for lambda is number of occurrence per unit time, which is now 15 per minute. Find the probability that a one minute period, in, in a one minute period, that's T, three inquiries arrive during the first 10 seconds and two inquiries arrive during the last 15 seconds. Okay, so basically we'd start with unifying the units. So we have 15 arrivals per minute, which is also equal to one fourth of inquiries per second. Now, to write uh, the time in seconds, he's looking for one minute, so we have 60 seconds. And he's asking, what is the probability that the counting process would equal to three in 10 seconds? And it's going to be, in the last 15 seconds, it's going to be equal to two. So I'm subtracting n60 minus n45, it's equal to Two. Remember that in general we have n as function of time, n as function of time. So this means the number of occurrence at 60 seconds, number of occurrence at 45 seconds, and here is the number of occurrence after uh, 10 seconds. So I have translated this. Find the probability that in a one minute period, uh, three inquiries arrive during the first 10 seconds. That's here, 
and then two queries arrive in the last 15 seconds, and that's stated here. Now, because of the independence, well, we can recall that occurrences are independent and they are also um, stationary. So we have incrementing, uh, we can say we apply that the independent increments property and the stationary increment property. The independent increment property says that we can split things. The joint probability equal to the multiplication of the individual probabilities. The stationary means things does not change with time, which means that I can look at the last 15 seconds or even the first 15 seconds. So we have applied now the increment, the independent increment property, and now to go from this stage to this stage, what matters is the time difference. So 16 mi 60 minus 45 is equal to 15. To go from this stage to this stage, I'm just applying the general form, I'm applying the equation to find the probability. So then lambda t equal to 10 over 4 and then we got the following expression so for this example we have found lambda we have stated the question in a mathematical format and then we use the two properties the independent increment property and the stationary property to come at this stage the final the final stage was to get the two expression by substitution and uh, the formula for the Poisson probability and we got the two expressions here now what remains is, is your job to confirm that you can just finalize this question and get the final answer please share your answer just to make sure that we can execute uh, the problem properly remember that um, what matters is only the time difference and here we're just substituting into the expression so we have uh, lambda t lambda is 1 over 4 and time is equal to 10 for this example. So I'm now going to share with you another practice problem. Now here is a testing problem and it would be fun to share your answers in the comment section and compare and then cross compare them to find which is right and which is wrong. Suppose that a secretary uh, a secretary receives calls that arrive according to a Poisson process. So we are telling, we are told that it's a Poisson process with a rate of lambda uh, 10 calls per hour. Just make sure that you use the same time um, unit. So if you use hour, you have to be consistent or minutes or seconds. Usually we use seconds, but you just need to be consistent because lambda times t appear as one thing in the expression. What is the probability that no call go unanswered no call go unanswered if the secretary is away from the office for the first and the last 15 minutes of an hour so we are looking at the probability that we have zero calls in the first 15 seconds and uh, 15 minutes and the last 15 minutes of an hour that's very similar to the previous question we had you need to use stationality, you, use, you need to use independent increments. And then please share your answer, share your answer in the comment, uh, in the comment section. If we get this right, it means we got the idea of applying Poisson process. Here's an additional cl in class problem. You can pause the video and uh, try this problem. It has three parts. It's not directly related to Poisson, but it's related to random processes. So we have two statistically independent, zero mean Gaussian, sorry, random processes, X and Y. We're giving the autocorrelation for Y and X. And then we are asked to find the autocorrelation of the sum, the autocorrelation of the difference, and find the cross correlation between W1 and W2. That's a fun problem to try. Please try it yourself, and you can also share your uh, answers in the comment section. Thank you very much and we'll see you in coming video.